Wait, wait, what? Uh, yes, I am. Am I here? Do I sound well? Do I sound like a robot from space? <laughs> Is that... Uh... <coughs> okay, I think we are live. Beautiful. Three, two, one. Hello. <laughs> Welcome, everyone. How's everyone doing? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever this might find you. Saeed, Chandra, welcome. Good to see you again. How's, every, how's life? How's everyone doing? Arc Platavu, how are you doing? Good to see you too. Okay. Um, oh, right. And what is this? What are we doing today? Well, first of all, hi, my name is Jose Luis. I run this thing called Parametric Camp. We do computational design live streams, we record tutorials, we do nerdy stuff, we do computation, we do geometry, we do form, we do design, we do art. Uh, we might do video games at some point. I actually like video games a lot computationally, so we haven't done a lot of that yet, but I think probably sometime in the future. I actually want to do more Unity or some Unity, which we haven't done any at all here. Unity is a really nice platform and it also allows for more creative stuff, like non-video game exactly things. It's 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 very great. So um, I may want to do that at some point. Anyway, we record tutorials live in the company of beautiful people. I can see I can see in the chat right now, Mikael, Joe Jaruldi. Um, I don't know if we've met before. Welcome to the channel. Arasto, Tevas, good to see all of you. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, we record live streams in the company of beautiful, smart, interesting people, like everyone that I see in the chat. Kartik, welcome. How are you doing? And um, and then afterwards, we edit them, we trim them, we make them nice edited tutorials, and we post them on the YouTube channel, typically in the form of playlists, which, by the way, we are right now currently in the middle or kind of finishing wrapping up this playlist called Advanced Development in Grasshopper. I kind of want to wrap that up already because we've been doing this for a few months already now. So we need to start moving on to other more interesting things. Not to say advanced development in Grasshopper is not interesting. Just to say that um, we need a change. We need to we need to start doing other things. Anyway, if you want to know, this is this is for new people in the channel. If you want to know more about us, feel free to follow us on social media. We also post when we're going to go live on social media, especially in Instagram. We're a bit more active there. And you're also welcome to join the Discord server to have conversations, to ask questions throughout the week. A link is in the description of this video. And uh, what else? What else? What else? And we also have a calendar that you can subscribe to get events pop up in your calendar whenever we go live. All right. Um, beautiful. That's the boilerplate. Now, what are we doing today? Today, I need all hands on deck. So if you are, I see many, many familiar faces, which is beautiful. And what we're going to do today is that in the playlist that we have been recording, Advanced Development in Grasshopper, I think we have finished a large chunk of context, of content that I wanted to do, which was everything that is based or that relates to writing code inside of C Sharp script components in Grasshopper. And I thought that was very interesting as a way of prototyping, all right? And I actually use those components all the time. I actually use them more than writing my own plugins, which has like all this overhead and um, the idea of generalizable stuff. It's a, it's, a, it's a complicated story. But anyway, it's a story that actually could be interesting. Uh, uh, let me write that down before I forget. Generalizable <laughs> uh, um, use. Okay. Okay. And uh, so what we're going to do today is that I would like to start recording the last chunk of videos for the playlist, a chunk where we actually move on from C sharp scripting to writing our own native plugins that we will compile and hopefully will be could be released uh, as um, could be released as as a plugin and put and upload it to food for rhino etc etc so but for that you know how i like having a script of the videos that i'm going to be recording for that i actually haven't sat down yet to think about what those videos are going to be 
as a sequence, as part of the curriculum. So I would very much appreciate everyone's help today um, in, in designing that curriculum, in designing which videos should we be recording for plugin development and what the order is going to be, which examples we might do for each one of those videos, etc. etc. So, um, so what, the way we're going to do that is that I'm going to open my notepad where I write my notes and uh, I would like to have people on the chat participating and giving me ideas. Uh, I'm actually, oh, I should have put ultra low latency on the video so that we have, uh, huh. so for example, I start seeing recommendations from Joe. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> All right, so we're going to do that. Also, for those of you, there's been a lot of conversation lately about my audio problems <laughs> on the live stream. Remember, I used to I use two microphones mostly. Uh, I use this one, a lapel microphone that is connected to a wireless receiver. This is the one that I started the, the live streams with and I actually like the quality of the sound and I like, I like it a lot. My only problem is that it uses a lot of batteries, like a lot, I have to change them every two live streams. And it's a big waste of stuff. And my other problem is that the other day I was using it and I started sounding like a robot from space, like <laughs> I, I heard the video, it was terrible. So I switched to this other microphone that I have here that was a birthday gift by Nono Martinez Alonso, by the way, a friend from this channel, personal friend as well. And this was going well. It picks up a bit more of an ambient. It has like more like a room quality, which I like it a little less, but it was also pretty good. But this one, was giving me problems because it was turning off for a couple seconds every few minutes. So we had these audio gaps. Um, I was getting help from Nicolas from the community. He was trying to help me troubleshoot some of the stuff. But uh, it turns out that when we actually tried to troubleshoot the thing, the microphone actually completely stopped working. <laughs> so now it doesn't work at all, like zero. So. I don't know what's going on with it, but fortunately this folk is back on track. And so I guess I'm going to go back to using this for the time being and see if there's another one that I can buy that has like USB, that is USB powered or that has reusable batteries. I don't know what the hell, or I may just buy like rechargeable batteries for myself. I don't know. So that's what's, so long story short, for those of you who are worried about audio problems, it looks like things are back under control because of this guy. It was just a one day that he was having a hard time that one day. So things are under control. Don't worry, we got this. Uh, I've also been looking at cameras. I want to get a new camera because I'm using webcams right now. I'm using this webcam here. This one, this one, this one. It <laughs> uh, which is actually really, really good and the quality is great. I don't know if you can notice. Um, and it shoots at 60 frames per second, which is great too. But I kind of want to upgrade to something that has better quality. Nono has me obsessed about these things. Nono is like really, really perfectionist about audio quality and video quality. He really puts a lot of effort in the production of his videos. I should learn uh, something from him. Mm. If only I had more time to do these things. Huh. Anyway, okay, let's get back to, let's get hands-on. So, um, uh, uh, Sergio, ah, <laughs> uh, all right, I appreciate that. Thanks for the kind words. Um, I'm happy you find this useful. Uh, maybe we can get to you doing some caramba at some point. I've actually never used caramba, I know. What was his name? I've met him at a conference, the author, the main author of Caramba. Very interesting person, like very nice guy too. Um, but yeah, I haven't done a lot of that myself, actually any of it, regardless of the fact that I actually teach structures at the, at school, at the university. So, yeah, but <laughs> it's never too late to learn, I guess. 
I'm more interested. I, I think I'm, I'm super interested these days in computer graphics, uh, in like low level computer graphics, like ray tracing from scratch, shaders, like GPU stuff. Like I think I want to do more of that. Anyway, all right. So let's get hands on. So for those of you who may need a refresher, remember we're doing advanced development in Grasshopper. We're currently in progress. There's a few videos that we will need to go back at some point. We started with introductions. Then we started with the fundamentals of how do you write code in C Sharp. Then we did a little bit of Rhino common scripting, blah, blah, blah. And then we moved on to more grasshopper specific development stuff, which became like a fairly large chunk. Uh, and we ended up, we're currently in the publishing form front. We are currently, the last one is the video that I did with Arasto last week or two weeks ago. No, last week, last week, where we streamed him in live from, uh, from Japan. That was so cool. And we were showing the work that he's been doing with Remo Sharp, Remo Sharp, whatever it's, it's however it's pronounced. If you haven't yet, I really suggest you subscribe to his channel. He's got this playlist where he explains the full Remo Sharp framework. It's really, really cool for remote collaboration. Anyway, so what I want to start is section five. And section five is going to be us moving so you see these are the, the kind of notes that i do make for myself etc so in section five needs to be about native and you see and these are the kind of uh notes that i make myself to remind about what videos we need to make etc etc so i have a few notes here of things that i need to record once we finish the full playlist and videos that we need to go back to uh, like recording introduction again and recording the plugin development intro. I just thought this morning while I was having coffee that when we did this video, rendering custom previews, perhaps we could do insert here in the middle of these two, a small exercise E9, for example, let's call that with a couple components that do custom previews that render custom stuff. So in this video, we made a vector visualizer. So I thought that as an exercise, perhaps this is a video I want to record at some point. We should do a vector display, uh, uh, create a vector display that maybe is customizable with like the color of the arrows or something like that. Or we color the arrows with a different color depending on the length. And maybe we also get like a tool tip where we specify the length of the... Um, so uh, just like a version of a vector visualizer. Now I also want to show in this component. This is a question for the chat for everyone. And I also want to show a component where we get to use the draw mesh function. We get to override that. Remember that there's two draw wires and draw mesh for custom previews. We only showed draw wires, so linear geometry for the preview. I would like to make an example where we preview something in 3D, something that we need to do the meshing of. So I would appreciate it. I couldn't come with a good example of that. Would you, would anyone have an idea of a component that we could use, that we could develop to, that has a preview that is some kind of 3D object, like a surface or a B-rep that we have to mesh manually? So whether if it's a pure visualizer of geometry or whether if it is a component that performs some geometrical operation but gives us some kind of... Oh, a curvature analysis. Wait, 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 that could be super cool because we could mesh a surface, we could analyze the curvature at the vertices and we could color the vertices with a gradient based on curvature. Oh, that sounds very cool. I just, well, okay, I think we're going to do that. But if you have any other ideas of a custom pre-visualization, uh, that would be super cool. Uh, curvature, curvature, color-coded curvature of a surface or something like that. That could be really cool and very nice and very visual as well. 
Okay, I need to, I need to take a, I need to go get some water. I'll be right back. Don't go, don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. All righty, I am back. Um, okay. Mm, uh, here. Drillion. Someone already mentioned it on Discord. Right now, Insight is a great and open source. I have created many scripts or components that don't exist in the plugin, but I can't understand how to add them in the plugin code and build it. It would be great if we can go through it sometimes. Mm. Drillen. I'm not I'm not sure if I, I understand Rhino Insight, but I don't understand. I don't understand. Can you hear me? Yes. I don't understand. I have created scripts for components that don't exist in the plugin. Which plugin do you mean? Rhino Insight or just vanilla components in Grasshopper? But I can understand how to add them in the plugin code and build it. So if what you're saying is that if what you're saying is that you have written C sharp script components with code, but what you don't know what to do is how to turn them into a grasshopper plugin that is compiled, then that is definitely something we're going to cover. So it's, I mean, that's the basic that we're going to do. So don't worry about that. If it relates to Rhino Insight, then I'm not sure that I understand the question. Timothy, uh, maybe a tool mimicking mesh analysis, visualizing if meshes are truly closed non-manifold and without duplicate point cloud will be useful. Hmm. That could be useful. I mean, that would be super useful, <laughs> obviously. But I'm trying to find an example where custom preview can really be an affordance, can really give us an advantage. And the idea is that for example, a, a component that takes a mesh and tells us and shows duplicate vertices could actually be just be implemented by outputting the IDs of those vertices. So we don't need a custom preview for that. Check for planar quads in a mesh and visualize that are not planar. Huh, interesting. So visualizing the non-planarity, -plan I like that one. We could also use colors for that. Huh, interesting. Color coded curvature of a surface uh, using uh, mesh vertex colors. Um, visualizing the non planarity of quad faces on a mesh with colors. That sounds very cool too, d mm -hmm. Thanks for that one. That sounds very doable. Kartik single and double curved curvature surface analysis. I guess that's very, very similar <laughs> to this one. So <coughs> we could just color code the surface using. Ha. That is that is cool. Mm hmm. All right, that's, I think, I mean, I think we're, this is enough. If we implement this to the, the, the curvature graph of a curve, if we visualize, call it, this is really, really good already. 
Okay, beautiful. Okay, so let's put a pin on that one. So we will do this would be uh, uh, exercise for custom preview. We will do this at some point. Maybe we can record this too today. Exercise for custom preview because we should do this sooner than later probably. I may just do a double live stream at some point and so that we can record a few tutorials and push push this because I, I really want to do Git. I really want to do a Git. I also want to do fractals and I also want to do Linden Mayer systems, L systems. So I don't know, that's going to be cool too. Also, we can write iterative planarization algorithm on the go. Yeah, but that is more of a computational graph geometry problem. It's not so much a preview option. I, I'm, I, think, I guess here I was focusing more on something that gives us preview options. We could output for each quad phase at the value of the offset of the non-planarity, whatever. Um, yes, fractals in 2D and 3D. Would, I really want to do that. So it may happen very soon too. Mm. Okay. Let's go back to, to native plugin development in Grasshopper. So actually, if any of you is interested in teaching, as a profession, this is what I do, literally very similar process. This is what I do every time I need to design lectures or I need to design a new class. I'm actually designing a new class this semester at, at the university. And this is what I do. I sit down and I write notes and I write scripts and I write the roadmap of the ideas that I would like to cover. And then I try to break them down into individual units of things that I need to produce like lectures or examples in order to deliver that content. So, so if any of you is interested in teaching professionally, this is a very good exercise to do. So <laughs> native development in Grasshopper. What is the roadmap? The general roadmap of things we want to teach. First of all, base, we, we should cover some basic concepts. Um, what are basic concepts here as a roadmap? So why, comp why, why native development versus C sharp scripting, uh, performance, reusability, distribution, the so things that are better when you do a native development. Um, Uh, design issues for generalizable. So the idea that when you are designing a plugin, this is not anymore about something that you just want to do and get it done, but it's something that it's an operation that people are going to do. So designing, breaking down the operations into individual components and putting them together is kind of an interesting design endeavor. I wonder if that's more of a conclusion sort of thing. Design issue for generalized. How do you break down a problem into discrete operations that can be combined? Uh, component design. I, I wonder, I want to talk about that, but I wonder if that's more of a, something that that should be more like a conclusion. Maybe. Okay. The basic concept is what could we cover as basic concepts? Uh, what else? Why native development? Why should we do this? Um, basic concept. What is, what is a grasshopper plugin in the first place? So GHA files are indeed DLL files. Um, so we talk about that and then we can talk about how grasshopper components are basically classes that need to be extended, that can be extend, that can be subclassed and in, and, and, or inherited. I, I forget what the exact model is, but 
what we basically do is how we do that. I'm, I'm thinking of the first video when I'm explaining this high level before getting into the examples. Testing and logging. Hmm. Good point. That's a good point. I'm going to add this here at some point. Test, testing and logging. We'll, we'll, we'll think that that's more of like a, by the end of the roadmap. Uh -huh. How about interacting with the underlying Rhino document? like making layers, accessing objects from the scene, interacting with selected objects. That is, that's great. But I, I think that's something that is not specific to native plugins. I think you can do that with C-sharp script components. So maybe that's a, maybe that's a video that we can insert still here in the section number four, where we're specifying techniques, right? But techniques that we can do with code, but we don't really need to, we don't really need to move. I would like, I think something, uh, yeah. I think something that I would like to do is um, for this section, do not introduce new programming concepts that cannot, that can be done in plain C sharp scripting. The, I think the idea here is that section four for me is like techniques, things that we can do with C sharp scripting, blah, blah, blah. And, but section five should be just taking everything that we have learned and seeing how it's implemented natively in plugins. That's it. Um, and whatever, else can be done in native development that cannot be done with C-sharp scripting. Would I like to develop a Kinect plugin for Grasshopper? Of course, I would love to, but <laughs> do I have the time? Not sure. Do I think it's uh, <laughs> something that has educational value? That's a good question. It probably does, but it probably would be fairly advanced because it would also need to tap into uh, the Kinect API, C++ compilation, etc., etc. I am not sure about that. Have I shown you, folks? Have I shown you the the, the tests that I did for? What is this? No. Have I showed you the test that I did for, for the Kinect? <laughs> oh, this looks terrible. Yeah, this is something I wrote like the first day I got a Kinect. <laughs> I was 3D scanning myself, but that looks terrible actually. Uh, oh, this is the video. Uh, this is the video. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this is very cool. Anyway, sorry, I got sidetracked. Or IO devices in general, maybe how to use a DJ machine from Grasshopper. <laughs> MIDI, MIDI is a pretty cool, cool topic. But again, all of those are more techniques about how to connect things together. I'm more interested here for this playlist on native plugin development specific stuff. Um, so if we want to develop like a Kinect plugin or like a MIDI plugin, I think that at some point will become its own playlist because it would take like a few videos to make that happen. Mm -hmm. And the focus of that would be breaking down the Kinect, breaking down MIDI. It's not so much about learning how to make a plugin. Um, all right, what else? Um, mm -mm. So stick to, stick to um, native dev specific topics. Why it, what is class of a plugin? Rest of a class are class that can be subclass inherited in um, mm, all right. 
So, okay, so maybe we do more stuff. I had something, I forgot what this was. I had something that I wanted to do here, but I forgot what it was. Ah, it's gone. Maybe it will come back. So, okay, so let's hand, let's get hands on. So now, um, dev, so what do we do here? So, first of all, what is the Grasshopper plugin? Uh, uh, when placed in Grasshopper libraries folder, it gets read by Grasshopper and added to the uh, add it to the tabs. Go an example, perhaps here, of a Visual Studio project with a plugin. Perhaps we show that, and before we actually get into doing that, uh, generative algorithms or multi-objective generic genetic algorithms, also a great topic. Also something that is. In, deserves probably its own playlist. It's not something that illustrates native plugin development. Show an example of okay, so I'm gonna leave that the development. Okay, so the basics is uh, install Visual Studio and I have another video where I point point to C sharp playlist video, maybe that, and then install the templates, mm, install the templates, and once we have the template installed, uh, start a new plugin project. Um, use the boilerplate, <clears throat> use the boilerplate to create the base plugin example, the example plugin. The sample plugin, build it and show it in Grasshopper. Maybe I need to um, show it in Grasshopper. We'll need to move files manually to the lift folder. Show how to uh, add depth folders. Okay. Show how to add the folders. So that is the basic. Basic plugin. So this could be another video, for example, basic plugin. We don't customize anything here. We just do the basic plugin. The one that comes as a template, as a sample. Um... <laughs> So let, let's just hack Grasshopper, right, Tevis? <laughs> All right. Basic plugin. And then <clears throat> I think at this point, we may want to talk about the structure of a Grasshopper native component. Let me pull up. I'm going to open the Machina plugin. Where is this? Machina for Grasshopper. Uh, so let me just to just remember, I haven't written Grasshopper plugins in a while already. So what things to take care of? So we just inherit from Grasshopper component. It's a logger. Actually, this is a really good example. Who was Timothy? Uh, this is a good example of a logger app. This could be cool. Uh, of a logger component, <clears throat> display. Um, what else? Robot, where is robot? Bridge utilities program resources. Oh, no, not the resources. Robot create 
So we have the constructor, we have the ID, the bitmap, etc., etc., register inputs. Uh huh. How about pointing out patterns that could be useful to orient on, as they're also used in Rhino Common? Hmm. Patterns in Grasshopper components. Interesting. Okay, so basic plugin, our first component from scratch. So first of all, things that we want to control, things that we need to explain. I would like to explain the constructor, the constructor, Well, let's explain the constructor first because we have a few names here. Then register, register input parameters, register output parameters, uh, solver instance, describe this simple examples adding few numbers uh, creating a vector for example <clears throat> so this could be like the simplest component ever we just and then we use that to explain the tractor the d d d d d these guys here etc etc and then we add, we explain we explain exposure explain exposure explain UID. Do I need to explain the GUID? Maybe not. Maybe that can be more of an advanced topic or something like that. All right. Our first component from scratch. At this point, I wonder if we want to make a few exercises. So I wonder if we want to take some of the components. Practice ex exer exercise. Take a few of the components in the plugin prototype and implement them. Them natively. Like one from each category, for example. I wonder. So let me actually check out where we stood in terms of um, mm, 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 where we were in terms of that so oh noises that's very cool actually that was i was actually i was actually watching yesterday on youtube i was watching a lecture from ken perlin um the inventor of pearly noise uh, well, the, 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 where were we? I'm at the camp, so files, advanced development, document components. So that would be this. And this is the grasshopper file. Oh, that's taking some time to load. Seven seconds? Why is this so heavy? Oh, anyway, we could do heavy duty. Huh. Ah, because we had the... Um... Do I have the profiler on? Oh, okay. Are these things on? Okay, well, I don't know what's going on here. 
data components, nerves components, vectors. So maybe we could do one of each, maybe. Sweeping so that we see more operations. Data components, the dynamic simulation components, mesh components, document properties, preview colors, heavy calculation. Get heavy objects. Publishing. What do you mean by publishing? Um, like how to upload your plugin to Food for Rhino? Actually, um, that's a good question. That's a good publishing. Uh, uploading to Food for Rhino making your plugin open source that's a question um we could take a look perhaps at the what is it called at the package manager what is it called jack i haven't used it ever but we could take a look and see how it works off topic question have you ever experienced with a rhino not allowing your file to be uploaded claiming that it potentially is a virus Yes, if you upload non-zip files, you probably will get trouble. Maybe even as a pipeline workflow. Yeah, Food for Rhino is not great for pipeline workflows or for connecting to builds or something like that. So you just, as of right now, I think you just have to do these things manually. It is what it is. But anyway, so practice exercise, take a few components and then plug in them in. Um, what else? What else could we cover here? So what else could we cover? More uh, uh, exposure and exp I think this at some point, this could be hmm. Something that I would like to do is I would like to explain how to deprecate, deprecate a component. So make it invisible, but keep it in, but keep it in the plugin. So that could be an interesting video. Difference between open source and closed source. We could cover that here. Yeah, practice exercise, deprecate a component. What other things we could do? I wonder what is, I have the other more advanced techniques perhaps. Uh, dynamic documents, data tools in Grasshopper. Oh, we could take a look at auto updates, for example. Um, how to implement auto updates for simulation components. This could be cool. Adding logos, you're right, very good. Um, adding icons to your components, explain resources, that's a good one. Explain resources in a VS project. That's a pretty good one. <clears throat> Perhaps we could do this here. And then in the ex practice exercise, we show, we also add um, custom previews, how those are implemented. Custom previews, how are those implemented in native data trees are different in native, how they're handled, custom previews, how those are implemented example, plus examples from the plugin, plus examples from the plugin, 
auto updates for simulation components plus examples from the plugin, which we do have components that they need the ticker. Deprecating a component, make it invisible, uh, make it invisible, but keep it in the plugin. The difference between developing for Mac and Windows, actually, I have no idea about that, <laughs> Arasto, because I am pretty much of a of an Apple hater. <laughs> so I do not own a single Apple product. And so I'm not the first person to do that. However, Arasto, if if you are willing to make that video, if you're willing to make that video, I will be more than happy to include a video where we point to your video in your channel or something like that, or we bring you in again <laughs> and you join the show. Let's uh, difference between web for PC and Mac. And I'm going to add Aras2. I'm going to throw Aras2 under the bus here in case he wants to. Uh, you don't. <laughs> All right. So if you don't, then boom. <laughs> Nothing. We're not doing this. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to add here help needed here. <laughs> so if anyone knows the diff how to develop Grasshopper plugins for Mac and you want to join the show or get a pointer to your video, you're more than welcome to do it. I just don't have a Mac device. I just can't do that myself. Beautiful. <clears throat> but um, testing and login, testing and login. Testing and login, what could we do here? So we could something that we could do. Something that we could do, for example, what could we do about this? So this is more of an advanced topic because something that it's nice. <coughs> well, something that we could touch upon is, all right, so we have classes and structs, working with lists, data trees, data components, script instances. It, this is where I explained. Okay, so there, there should be somewhere where we talk about importing classes, importing libraries, and using libraries in your plugin, um, just like we did, because but it's a little different. So plus examples from the plugin. Uh, examples from the plugin. So we could do that. What else can we do? So, uh, shared instances between components. Um, shared instances between components, uh, example of a logger a logger component. Yeah, so one thing that I want to talk about here is the fact that because everything is bundled in the same project, we can do other tricks, such as, for example, creating variables that are available cross through the different us through the different uh, instances of logger uh, 
Aha. And how to make something that talks to other components. Share instances between components, static, static props, example of a logger component. Yeah, that's that's something that we can't do with C sharp script components. What else can we do? Oh, I'm going to preview. Okay. Shall we put just to here? Mm -hmm. Static properties. And then testing and login. I think login is going to be covered by this one. And testing. Testing, testing. What can we do about testing? Testing. Did I explain here how to development folders, testing? Who suggested testing? What can we test, actually? Testing and logging, efficient debugging, Timothy. So we can talk about testing, testing and debugging. We can talk about, for example, breakpoints. I think we can actually make this earlier because in any way we're going to have to link basic plugin how to add development folders our first component from scratch adding icons yeah maybe this one goes here <clears throat> breakpoint state state of a component Mm. Performance could be logged as well. State of a component, performance of a component, error handling. We haven't seen, we haven't taken a look at that. Have we done that? Error handling plus examples from plugin. Oops. So that should be whatever we talk, wherever we did that, whatever we implemented that. Where did we implement that? Nurse components, vector components. Where did we did that? Error handling. Error handling, understanding script. So after we did that after we did error handling oh. on why did we do that? On trees. Oh, look at my hair. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> uh, so we did that after the data tree. So perhaps we can do this here for the same so that we have the same. And auto updates. We did that custom previews. We did those after simulation. Yeah. Breakpoints, and I, th I mean, I, this sounds good. Unit testing, probably not integration, sanity. Unit testing. That, I mean, that is awesome and important, but it sounds like a huge can of worms. It's like its own thing. I think I would rather, if, if it's about doing unit testing, um, Describe that unit testing is also possible, but perhaps another playlist. Uh, I'm not sure that I want to get into that because that's a lot. Um, hmm. Um, Using a Grasshopper workbench file. So this is what I do. <laughs> it's just, 
super super informal but i mean could be that could be done version management could be a nice thing to talk about ah it is it is and we're going to do that here in version management deprecating components make it in, make it visible keep it in the plugin a component that that uh, that describes its version from the project. Mm -hmm. So very, those are very good topics, actually. So that's one thing. And another thing for that video could be that deprecating components, make them invisible, etc., etc. Well, we actually have a lot of stuff. Oh boy. Oh, this is gonna take forever. <laughs> oh boy, I really wanna finish this playlist. Ah, uh, I think we're gonna have to do an intensive. We're gonna have to do like a full three days. <clears throat> and just like tutorials, tutorials, tutorials. If only I had time for that. It's just not gonna happen anytime soon. I have so much work this, this month and next month. Oh boy. Hmm. Any other ideas, things we're missing? So let's say, let's say we do, oops, this is, what am I doing? So this is 5.1, basic concepts. So for example, and this is 5.2, basic plugin. We're going to do this, our first component. So this is going to be 5.4 icons, uh, exercise, whatever it is, practice. And then <clears throat> we're going to do here five, data structures in grasshopper so we talk data trees lists in native and um, data trees in native and examples from the plugin error handling error handling and then here seven auto updates eight custom previews oh we also here we also talk about the state so persistent states persistent states a variable scope <clears throat> etc etc variable scope, custom previews, and then here, version management. We're going to put a pin on this one. <laughs> uh, external libraries, importing and using distribution, how distribution, bundling the, the DLL, Licensing e licensing issues. All right. Then 11 is going to be shared instances between components, static properties, shared data between components. I don't know how to, we're going to call this, but something like that. And then testing and debugging. And then publishing your components. Publishing your components and on the design of plugins. And this will be a short conversation. Maybe I could bring someone in, uh, bring a guest. Oh, I could bring Andrew Human. Oh, that would be great to have him come in and just give a short like a quick speech about 
things to keep in mind when designing a plugin because he has designed a lot of plugins. Oh, that would be super cool. I'm so doing that. I mean, I'm so inviting him. I hope he accepts my invitation. And then um, at some point here, we need to introduce shared data between components, publishing, testing, and debugging. All right, so uh, here we're going to do e dot x. x is going to be the, the plugin. And here what we're going to do is develop the full, the, all the prototypes into the full plugin, into the full plugin. Don't do it. Don't do it as a video. <laughs> Just show the result and point to a live stream where we do it. Do it. You show the result and point to a live stream where we do it. But I mean, I don't want to have anyone sit down through like three hours of me porting all the production into the full plugin. Don't do it a video, just show the result. Okay. I. Someone is knocking on my door. I'll be right back. Okay, speaking of topics, you know, one thing we also, also, I also really, 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 really want to do very soon. Uh, I said fractals and I said uh, L systems, but I really, really want to do mazes. That would be super, super freaking cool. Like to design like, you know, like twisty shapes and forms. That would be really freaking cool. Um, Um, mm -mm -mm. <sighs> okay, uh, what else, what else, what else? Also, uh, this is a side, a side topic, side topic. Um, all of you viewers, people in the chat, lovely parametric campers. <laughs> I have a request for a brainstorming session. So we have two nice big milestones approaching very soon. One of them is the 100th live stream. I think this one is, what are we right now? The 94? So in six live streams, it's going to be the 100th parametric live stream. So I would like to make something special about that one. So I'm very open to ideas. I actually don't have any idea about what to do or what can we do to make it special. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that also very soon in April, it will be the second year anniversary of Parametric Camp on its YouTube form and the first live stream I did um, in April of 2020, you know, in like full on, full on COVID mode. So I'm also, I'm also gathering ideas and intel about what could we do to celebrate two years of Parametric Camp and almost 6,000 people at this point, 6,000 subscribers. So if you have any ideas, please join the Discord and, but I will also start a thread somewhere on the, in the Bonfire channel or something and, and brainstorm about things that we could do. Maybe the difference between plugins and programs, maybe the difference between, well, where are we? Oops, sorry. Maybe the difference between plugins and programs working with Grasshopper like Launchbox installed by using an installer. 
interesting. I've never used Lunchbox, first of all, and I've never used, uh, I've never written an installer. I know that Firefly, oh, we could have Andrew Payne in the, in the call too. Whoa, that would be really cool. Andrew Payne, like the, the, the author of Firefly, that would be really cool. Even Daniel Piker. That would be super interesting. Yeah, wow. I'm really excited about this now. <laughs> uh, Lambert, so it has ML, but what do you mean? So you mean writing something that talks to an external process. So you have like a Python script in the background and then your Grasshopper plugin talks to the Python script and brings data back and forth. Is that what you're talking about? DJ machine plus Grasshopper. <laughs> okay, fine. I asked you, I'm going to take you up on that one. We're going to write something where we're going to connect my DJ turntables to Grasshopper and use them as sliders. But we're going to treat that more as a project rather than something that goes into this, into this list. But okay, but I'm going to, let's do that. I'd ask you, if you can help me by doing a little bit of research on what is out there in order to read MIDI controllers into C -sharp, com into C -sharp code, that would be great. No, no, they use another library in C -sharp. Uh, No, no, Martinez Alonso, I'm assuming is that what you're saying? Oh, you mean for the 100th anniversary stream, a MIDI controller, a DJ plus Grasshopper. Huh, okay. All right, let's discuss that on Discord. Let's put it offline and talk about, talk about that. Accord framework. I don't know what Accord is. What is Accord? Oh, there's a framework for machine learning in .NET. Interesting. Combined with audio and image processing library is completely written in C sharp. It's a complete framework for building product and even for commercial use samples. Oh, interesting. I had no idea. Ooh, this is totally something we could um, make a playlist on. But at this point, if we're going to do if we're going to do machine learning, we could just do, I mean, Python. Oh, oh, did I say, did I say the P word? You, you, uh, you see, my mouth feels weird now. <laughs> oh, inter so this is very interesting. Timothy, thanks for bringing it up. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to write a note here for the future, like, like a chord net framework. I'm actually going to write it in my general parametric camp notes. I have another, um, you see, random ideas for streams. <laughs> uh, a core.net, so that's going to go in there. On the design of plugins, post, exercise request, I think we're probably good. I think this is a really good start and we have a lot of videos going here already. So we have a lot of work to do. If as we are doing this, other topics come up, then we can design where to insert them. Um, Phoebus, Tevas, Phoebus, really? Seriously? Are you going to make me use my moderator rights to make sure <laughs> you don't engage in nonsensical stuff on the chat. <laughs> well, you know, the sad thing of all is that I will eventually end up doing that at some point because whatever my programming language preferences might be, um, the P language is actually quite popular and fairly useful in certain contexts. So, I'm not saying that it's not going to happen. I just wish we could focus on more uh, design stuff rather than, you know, 
like that, those kind of programming languages. But yeah, it's that I don't think it's going to happen in 2022. Nope. I would actually, you know what? I would way, I would prefer way more to do JavaScript if I were to make a new playlist about coding. You know what we could do? Something we could do is instead of doing a full playlist on how to code in JavaScript or whatever, something we could do is if you have learned C sharp with the other playlist, just make one video, which is this is Python. This is how Python works at the basic level and compared to C sharp. That could be do Havujimana. Exactly, right? Very good. Thank you. I'm going to make you a moderator of the channel. Thanks a lot. <laughs> or we could do also the same thing. We could do with JavaScript. We could just say, if you know how to code, this is like a quick one hour tutorial on how to do JavaScript things in JavaScript. Anyway, <clears throat> this could be really good. I, I'm excited about this one. I'm going to ping them and see if they want to join the fun. Uh, <laughs> I think that would be a cool video to do, right? A one hour crash course on JavaScript. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, so I think we are probably good with this. I'm going to let this marinate in my brain. So maybe this week I make some amendments. I may also just post this on Discord in case people have feedback or things they want to add. That could be interesting. Uh, okay. And then All right, once we got that out of the way, then what are we doing today? I need to record a small clip. Uh, that's what I'm going to do. I think I, I'm not going to make any. We could do the exercise of custom preview, but that's going to take some practice and some research before. So, so I would like to do that next time we meet. So I think today what we're going to do is we're going to record. I'm going to record a small clip that I need to add on to a previous video. So if you remember, we had a conversation last, we had a video last time we met where we discussed performance. And in that video, turns out that um, in that video, uh, the point that we were trying to make about comparing the performance of nat native components and C -sharp -script components, the results we were getting were not exactly what we were trying to illustrate, but Team C Science actually brought up a super here. This he brought up that the problem was that Grasshopper was taking forever to cast the elements into native Grasshopper point classes, and that's what was taking forever. So I would like to make a video where. I insert that clip and explain that problem there. So we're going to do that today. I'm just going to do that right now. So I'm going to close all of this stuff. I'm going to close this. Actually, I wonder if we could just, uh, nah, it's too late. Um, okay, so performance. Here, performance. So we had this here. I think in the other video, where do I where do I have that video? Okay, I guess that was this one. Sorry, we were here. Yeah, this video. For this video, I was on the other side. So yep, I just teleported myself. Kartik or processing. Kartik, if you want to do processing, you really need to check Dan Schiffman's videos. Like he's just uh, processing for UI is so dope. 
what do you mean for UI for creating like interactive things that you can click in and stuff? Is that what you mean? Um, all right. So this the audio is going to be different also because of the microphones. Eh. So I'm going to make this. I'm aren't going to. Uh, I'm going to make a point and I'm going to put it in set one point and I'm going to and then internalize the data so that we don't need anything. Okay. Solution recompute. Oh, it's actually way faster than the native one. Huh? Pressing for, oh, I, I haven't tried it yet, Thivas. Oh, can we do that on the video? Let me, let me, we're actually going to do that because I was, I've been meaning to, oh, it's in beta already. Well, it's fine. We can try the beta, the beta, beta, beta. And also, have you ever used, have you ever used processing inside a Raspberry Pi. That is very cool too. <laughs> okay. All right, I got sidetracked. So Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to save this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy so that I don't mess up with the original one. Uh, performance copy here. And I'm going to delete this one. Okay. And then I'm just going to talk about the problem. All right. Okay. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. thinking about how to bomb into the previous video. Well, this is going, oh, let me move this to another window and close all of this stuff and document components. And this could be a new file, no template. And I, we don't need this video here. We also don't need it, this here. Okay, so now we have a clean. All right. Sorry, uh, quick intermission. This is me from the future. So in the video that you were just watching, we were discussing how we were finding weird that the C sharp version of the implementation was actually not so performative. And after the recording of that video, one of the members of the parametric cam community teams designed, he actually brought up the issue that the problem with this component is that when, um, the problem with this component is that it turns out that point 3D, it's the native point type that Rhino Common implements. But it turns out that when points are exchanged between different instances of, grad, of grasshopper components, they actually get wrapped inside of this wrapper class that is called the grasshopper point because um, that brings in a sort of like other other sets of functionalities and other stuff that um, that Grasshopper needs to do its job properly. And it was that conversion at the end of the component from point 3Ds to Grasshopper points that was actually causing the issue of the performance. So it turns out that if we do this tiny trick, which is 
instead of relying on the component itself to do the transformation between point 3D, if what we do is we just say, I'm going to create a grasshopper point, all right? And I'm going to turn this into an array of grasshopper points. If I run this, I'm going to get a bunch of errors here because I cannot convert implicitly here from point 3D to grasshopper point. So what we need to do is we need to say here, I'm going to create a new grasshopper point and I'm going to pass in this new point that I'm creating. Well, do I have overloads for? No, I don't have overloads for parameters. So I actually have to construct the point and then wrap it inside of the grasshopper point. And then if I run this, this code actually works much better. And let's just reload. So let me recompute everything. So if I recompute the code, you can see that now it's actually extremely performative. So the whole thing took 25 milliseconds, which actually outperformed this component, which is natural because this component actually does more stuff than just a simple grid. It outputs the points, but it also outputs cell outlines. It also outputs lists with rectangles. So it just performs more operation and that's what it's a little heavier. If it did only the rectangles, it would probably be much nice, much, much leaner. So it turns out that because of the amount of elements, it was the conversion that was causing all this overhead and it was a very noticeable overhead, so one second. That doesn't mean that when you are writing C sharp script components, you should work with grasshopper types. You should definitely not do that. You should definitely stick to a point or to like Rhino common types for the geometry. It's only when you output that information that the grasshopper component needs to do this conversion. So if you do the conversion manually yourself for data that you're outputting, you will gain that performative advantage, but you do not need to do that for data types that you're only going to be using in your algorithm for manipulation, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, so that was a quick side note. Let us go back to the main video. All right. <clears throat> okay. So I think that was it. I will edit that, insert it in the previous video, and then just publish that. And I think we're going to cut it a little short today because I want to do that video editing. Oh, wait, no, we were checking processing. Uh, sorry, sorry, let's check out processing. I have not seen processing four. So I'm going to do Windows. I'm going to save it to this folder that I have in Dropbox with software where I keep my processing versions. Oh, I actually did have processing, eh, whatever. So, but I haven't really tried it at all. So, uh, ba, 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 where is that? Where is that? So processing is here. It just downloaded. I'm going to extract here, extract here, and I'm going to delete the alpha version. This one also is going to go and ta-da! Oh, the screen is showing processing beta. All right, read about this status release. Some sketches from what has changed. What has changed? Between alpha and beta, I don't care about that. Changes in four. We're using Java 17 instead of Java. This is breaking. In beta three, there's a major to support themes in the UI. Interesting. It's possible the library mode or tool contributions won't work. No, what about I had a library? Um, we recommend using a separate sketchbook folder for your processing for projects so you can install libraries, blah, blah, blah. There will be no 32 bit support. That's fine. I mean, it was the 21st century, it's 2022. Before four release, we'll be updating the visual design and graphics. Things may currently say processing three and be out of the date. Uh, and Ben has been doing this. He updated this 10 days ago. All right. So click here to create a new sketchbook. 
in document and I'm getting sketchbook location in processing sketchbook callback could not be found did I get anything I'm not sure what's going on with those sketches but processing is still here I guess um, <clears throat> what is this data lists I guess that's not okay so get started and what's new here then import a library add library arduino well it looks like it still works maybe i don't know <laughs> i haven't installed my own library <laughs> Yeah, I guess I haven't used it here, but everything else. And present in library debug archive. So I guess the changes are basically the engine, but there aren't like really major changes to how processing works, right? Um, on the link in each 4.0 release. Text carrots, syntax coloring, refresh, so folder, out with the old 20 year old TIFF has been removed, so it's now used for the guys less little bit safe files are more compatible and that image will also work on more files than in the past. Also, image files must have an extension. We're no longer adding TIFF files. That's fine. TIFFs, like, who uses TIFF anymore? We wrote a 10 year old code that handles full screen to get it working on Apple Silicon. A theme selector. All right, give us the theme selector. Did I just, did I close processing? No, why did I close processing? I like the, um, I like the, the new icons actually. Where, where is theme selector? Theme selector. Ooh, hoo, hoo. So we have this and this. Oh, nice. I wonder where am I going to use this? This looks like, like my jam. This is the kind of things that I would do. Oh, this is a lot. Oh, parametric comes should probably do this one. No? <laughs> or this one. This one should be more like a parametric camp thing. Like print. Hello, P camp. This and I'm going to run this. And the window is just as it used to be. And it's on my other screen, actually. Hello, PCAM. And copy to the clipboard. And mm -hmm. all right. Beautiful update theme. OK. Create font, theme selector, color selector, archive sketch, debugger. Everything else looks pretty similar. Is there anything in preferences? Requires a start, blah, blah, blah. So this should probably be its own folder now, processing four or something. Use smooth text and text for error. Run sketches on display. Oh, okay, this is nice. Which, what? So if I run this now, oh, it shows up here. And if this is display one, ah, okay. And this, if I run, did I just? Okay. And then it shows up. Um, it doesn't show up. It doesn't change. Uh, okay, change that. And okay. All right. So it looks like I found a bug. <laughs> okay. All right. Hopefully they will fix that. <clears throat> Language is not available yet. I hear, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I'm kind of, yeah, I'm not a little, I'm a little like with those things. Languages are great. Victor from the, from the, 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 the community, he actually made a plugin to rename Grasshopper components in different languages. It's just that I find that if you're going to do this and you're going to do this sustainably, You'd rather just like learn English because like everything is in English and just I mean I speak I'm a native native Spanish speaker but 
at some point, if you just want to be part of the global conversation, just embracing English is just... Well, but that's a different conversation um, that also taps into issues of accessibility and democratization of knowledge. It's, um, it's a big one. So um, maybe we can have the conversation some other time. Anyway, I'm going to call it a day. Thank you very much, everyone, for being here. It was a pleasure. Thank you for the feedback and the input. You actually brought in a bunch of issues that... Uh... Ah, <laughs> I see you now. You mean P mode, right? Is that what you're saying, Fibas? <laughs> okay. Well, you're really, really working hard for me to moderate you out of the chat today, huh? <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'm going to call it a day. I'm going to start my Friday. I actually have very exciting plans for this weekend, so I'm going to take some time off. So I'm going to wrap up the video, schedule the, the, um, the publishing, and then do some, run some errands and hopefully start the weekend sometime soon. Thank you very much, everyone. Love being here with you. And I will see you next week, probably same day, same time. Uh, we're, as I said at the beginning of this semester, we're probably sticking to Fridays for the live streams this semester and for the time being. And, um, and yep, yeah. thank you very much. See you. Bye bye.